Good afternoon everyone. I'm Sumitra and now I would like to introduce the speaker for this afternoon session, Dr. Bhushan Vishal. Sir has expertise in metabolomics, microscopy, proteomics, tissue culture, forward genetics, abiotic stress biology. Sir has obtained his PhD from National University of Singapore and his thesis title is OSTP S8 Control Salt Stress Tolerance and Agronomic Traits in Rice. Sir's research experience include him being a research fellow at School of Biological Sciences, Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. And he worked on algal genome editing and transgenesis for Rubisco Engineering. And he's a postdoctoral fellow from Department of Bio Biological Sciences, National University of Singapore. That work includes regulation of stomatal development by SPTs involving microscopy, protein expression, purification and proteolytic processing assays. Sir is a DAAD fellow and his internship was at um, Department of Microbiology and Cell Biology, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, India. Sir has also taught both theory and hands-on laboratory training courses for molecular biology, animal physiology, plant development biology at National University of Singapore. He supervised and mentored undergraduate and postgraduate students. Sir has led laboratory courses for postgraduate students, especially in immunotechnology and bioseparation techniques at Indian Institute of Technology, Karakpur, India. Well, Sir has many skills and some of them include in immunology, it is PBMC isolation and antigen simulation assay. In molecular biology, gene cloning, southern blot, transgenic generation, CRISPR or Cas9 system. In proteomics, it is protein expression and purification using E. coli and uh, E. coli as host. Diagonal diagonal gel electrophoresis and uh, sir has about eight publications to his credit in total and has received many awards the first one being awarded uh, best poster in cell and molecular biology theme in 20th biological sciences graduate congress uh, university of thailand in 2015 he qualified NET, that's National Eligibility Test, conducted by Agricultural Scientist Recruitment Board, India, in the discipline of Agricultural Biotechnology. He was also awarded GRF and qualified NET for lectureship conducted by CSIR, and it was uh, All India Rank 50, which uh, Sir scored. So it's a commendable performance. And he was also awarded Merit Certificate for the Best Academic Performance in VIT University, India. Awarded Ministry of uh, from MHRD, Government of India Scholarship for Master's Program in IIT Kharagpur, India, 2010. Dear participants, it's indeed a rare opportunity that we get to listen to such prominent and eminent personality. So now I kindly request... Dr. Bhushan sir, Bhushan Vishal sir to begin the session and thank you sir from the team of CBIT for you being on this webinar with us. Thank you so much. Hi, thanks for having me for this webinar and giving me the opportunity to deliver a talk on my small contribution in plant biotechnology. So today I will discuss one of my findings, which says OSTPS8 confers salt stress tolerance and controls agronomic traits in rice. So I'll start with uh, the major global problems that can be defined as the five Fs, food, fodder, fuel, pharma, and farming. <clears throat> So <clears throat> science and technology are doing uh, their best in mitigating these problems. So one of the most prevalent one is the global food supply. So increasing population and the constantly decreasing cultivable land, 
these are the two factor that limits this so if we talk about the available food sources then rice come up as uh, one of the most important candidate in this aspect in terms of providing nutrition to more than two third population of the world so this makes it more important to improve the grain productivity of the crop plant like rice so that we can meet the global food need uh, there are different factors that made this uh, rice Uh, one of the most important model system for the plant science research so uh, the factors includes the innate properties of the rice like the genetic simplicity the diploid genome of the rice smallest genome within the crop plants and collinearity with the other crop plants available germplasm and the high throughput genetic analysis by the available several markers then uh, if you talk about the crop plant like rice the most important factor is the grain yield and this grain yield is affected by two factors one is genetic uh, so the genetic factor depends upon the genetic constitution of the plant so it vary with the species and maybe within the species depends upon the variation in the genes and the external factor so that depends upon the environment in which the plant uh, growth is happening so there are different factors there are different negative factors that affect the growth and development of the crop plants so one of the prevalent one is uh, salinity stress that comes under the abiotic stress so the two factors that makes it uh, more important one is the uh, constantly increasing uh salinization of the land and the salt sensitivity nature of the crop plant most of the crop plant that use that is that are used as a food source are uh, uh, very much salt sensitive so this makes much important to generate the salt tolerance crop varieties so keeping this in mind i will brief you the outline of the study that i am going to discuss today so with the forward genetics approach uh, we generated the uh, ds insertion lines that has uh, many uh, knockout lines in which different genes uh, were uh, disrupted so we screen these mutant um, to get uh, the mutant with the a uh, phenotype having altered soil tolerance and altered agronomy trait so this screening gave us one mutant that has a two contrasting phenotype one is uh, soil sensitive and one is reduced grain yield and the uh, uh, gene responsible for this mutant was involved in the sugar metabolism so today i'm going to discuss this study uh, so this is the uh, Uh, first result this is showing the insertion of the gene insertion you could see insertion of the ds in this insertion line is in the third exon and that makes uh, uh, this line knock out for the ostps8 so the disruption lead to two contrasting phenotype one is altered salt tolerance you could see upon the salt treatment the left is wild type and the right one is ostps8 mutant you could see that the mutant is a uh, salt sensitive compared to wild type and if we see the agronomic trait the most important agronomic trait is grain yield so these are the rice panicle you could see the mutant panicle is a significant reduction in the number of the spikelets and the grains compared to wild type so uh in this talk i will mostly discuss the salt uh, tolerance uh, aspect of this so what is this ostps8 this ostps8 stands for oryza sativa trehalose 6 phosphate synthetase 8 so what it does this is one of the enzyme involved in the sugar metabolism so this 
enzyme use, uses glucose 6-phosphate and uridine diphosphate glucose as a substrate and catalyze uh, the formation of trehalose 6-phosphate. Subsequently, this trehalose 6-phosphate is phosphorylated by T6P phosphorylase to one of the disaccharide of 2-glucose molecule that has been joined by alpha-11 linkage and it is called trehalose. So the final product of OSTPS8 is the disaccharide trehalose. Uh, so these slides showing the, the uh, reports on the TPS and its product trehalose. So uh, this trehalose is found in wide range of organisms from the bacteria, yeast, fungi to the higher plants. But the mode of regulation, how it affects the growth and the metabolism is different in, in the different uh, organism. Like in the smaller organism like yeast and the insect, the amount of the trehalose that is found is fairly high. Because of that, it acts as an osmoprotectant and confer desiccation tolerance in these organisms. But uh, this is not the scenario in the case of higher plants. Uh, the reason behind the amount in which it is found in the higher plant is extremely low that it cannot act as an osmoprotectant. So it is predicted that it acts as a signaling molecule. So the intermediary product of TPS, T6P or the trehalose could act as a signaling molecule in regulating the stress mechanism. Uh, so what is known about the TPS in plants? So it is known that it regulates carbon metabolism and the growth in yeast and plants. Uh, in Arabidopsis and the rice, 11 members of the TPS has been discovered till date that has been classified in two groups. And it is known to regulate uh, a few abiotic stress tolerance, but the underlying mechanism is still elusive. So this image is showing the TPS found in Arabidopsis, rice and yeast. Uh, in grouped in two classes, class one and class two. So here it lies the OSTPS8, which we have characterized in this study. So this is the salt sensitive phenotype of this mutant. So what we, how we did the salt treatment is, we use the hydroponic setup. So this is uh, the setup you could see before treatment, the left is wild type, right is the mutant. And then we treat this in the hydroponic solution with 100 millimolar NaCl for three weeks. So you could see the effect of the salt treatment in the mutant compared to wild type is a drastic reduction in the greeny vegetative tissue in the mutant. And what we did after that, <clears throat> we transferred the treated plant in the recovery tank without salt. And then we observed the survival rate. So what we observed in this case, you could see the mutant survival is only 20%, but the wild type is about 20%. That confirms the salt sensitivity nature of this mutant. After confirming the salt sensitivity nature, we analyzed some of the physiological traits that is associated with the salt stress. So one of the most important uh, physiological trait is water retention capacity that is measured by the press weight by dry weight ratio. So we measured these upon treatment and before treatment. So you could see before treatment, there is no difference in the press weight and the dry weight, but after treatment, there is a drastic reduction in the ratio of press weight dry weight. That clearly says that there is a significant reduction in the water retention capacity due to the uh, less vegetative tissue in the mutant. And the same we get in the both in the shoot and the root part. Then the another physiological trait is the effect of the ions. So as we are treating the plants with the NaCl, so we check the level of the Na plus upon the treatment. So before that, I will show you how the salt stress happens in the plant. Once the salt is added, the first phase of the salt stress started, that is called phase one smotic stress, <clears throat> this is uh, lies between like uh, days to weeks. And then the long term phase started, that is because of the ionic and the toxic effect of the ions, this is salt specific effect. So you could see this phase 
where we can see the visible effect on the growth there is a drastic reduction in the growth if the plant is soil sensitive that's what we observed in the soil sensitive plant on treatment so in this result you could see we measured the so sodium and potassium for the control so we could see that upon soil treatment there is a induction in the sodium concentration in the soil sensitive mutant both in shoot and the root but not in case of the uh, potassium ion so that says that specifically sodium ion toxicity is responsible for the uh, uh, drastic reduction in the vegetative tissue because of the salt stress so this happens because the lower water retention capacity and the lower biomass of the vegetative tissue will Uh, reduce the capacity of the plant to dilute the water and the ions and in this case the ions is na plus that is the reason there is a elevated level of the na plus we could find in the mutant plant so then to find out more on ostpa set and its role in the soil we did the expression analysis so first we did the spatio temporal expression what we did we use the different tissue uh, root shoot leaves and the panicle and check the expression level of ostpsa with actin as a internal control we also generated transcriptional reporter line and measured this with the gus assay and both the experiments shows the root exhibit the highest expression of ostpsa so that suggests that ostps8 might have a uh, major role in the root compared to other tissue of the rice plant then we also check the protein expression of the ostps8 so the first panel is showing the control a, a gfp under the ubiquity where you could see the ubiquitous expression of the gfp in the onion epidermal cell but uh, Uh, ostpsa expression with the gfp tag you could see the expression in the plasma membrane and the adjoining cytoplasmic region so as the ostpsa is enzyme so it is uh, it is expected uh, for the expression of the enzyme the pattern that we got now we have showed that due to the um, uh, loss of function of this mutation the soil sensitive phenotype is there but to confirm that the first thing need to be done is the genetic complementation so what we did we used the mutant line and complement this mutant line with the native cassette of the ostpsa that is around 8 kb starting from the promoter to its terminator you could see we got the fairly uh, elevated level of the ostpsa in the two independent complementation line and uh, uh, in this image of the salt treatment you could see upon treatment the two independent line complementation line behaves similar to wild type but the ostpsa mutant behaves as a salt sensitive upon recovery you could see the salt sensitive is drastically reduced the survival rate but the complementation line shows a similar pattern as the wild type that shows the 100% rescue upon the Uh, complementation with the native cassette now we also generated uh, the separation line using the double standard rni strategy so that gives us 30 to 40% uh, reduction in the ostpsa expression in the two independent transgenic line of ostpsa dsrni then uh, we did the treatment assay also so you could see the two independent ds rna line of uh, ostpsa showing the phenotype similar to the ostpsa knockout mutant so this shows that even the 40, 30 to 40% reduction is enough to confer this uh, rice plant the salt sensitive phenotype so then we also check what happens if we over express this gene so up, upon over over expression what we could see is the this over two independent over expression line behaves better than wild type upon treatment 
and upon recovery you could see by this quantification the survival rate is much higher than that of the wild type so this is one of the important result that shows that the os 3 ps8 can enhance the salt tolerance in rice so uh, so uh, so far the result says that uh, we set up the gene to phenotype relationship that this gene is responsible for the salinity stress tolerance but to find but the underlying mechanism was still elusive to find out more on that uh, we analyze the root of uh, the rice plant so as we have showed that the mutant is salt sensitive and the high sodium level in the leaves so what could happen that the high sodium level in the mutant line could be due to the apoplastic leakage in the mutant and as in the root it is known that hydrophobic barrier is one of the important player for the salt stress tolerance so this what is the hydrophobic barrier in the rice so this is the transverse section of the root you could see here so the two layers the exoderm is the second layer the pink one and in the inner orange layer the endoderm is these are the two layers where the hydrophobic barrier layers are formed so what happens uh, in general when from the soil the water and uh, salt uptake is happening it happens and it has to go through the inner uh, circular layer of the roots and then once it reaches the vascular bundle in the center it is transported to the different parts of the plant but it has to go through the two layers of the hydrophobic barrier and this image is showing the hydrophobic barrier formation in plant how it happens so this is the apical part of the root this is the mid part and this is the basal part so the two layers that comprises the hydrophobic barrier one is suberin lamella and the second is the casparian band the suberin lamella in this image you could see the uh, yellow color that form a layer in the inner cell wall of the endodermis and that can be stained by chloral yellow and upon the microscopy this will give the yellow color and the casparian band it forms it uh, uh, forms the layer in the anticlinal wall of the endodermal cell because of that the uh, patchy or the band type uh, formation we could see and this can be stained with the different uh, stain that gives the green color and if you talk about the formation of the these bands uh, these uh, hydrophobic barrier then the first the casparian bands forms you could see it started in the mid region and then there is a discontinuous region here and then is the continuous region in the uh, basal region so what we did we went we went ahead and we analyze what happens to uh, the mutant and the overexpression line so this row is showing the wild type this is mutant and the last is the overexpression line so in this uh, uh experiment we first took out the transverse section of the roots from the three different layer one is the uh, apical layer and one is the middle layer and one is the uh, sub layer so uh, basal layer so the result you could see and then we uh, stain this with the fluoro yellow and we did the confocal imaging so here you could see in the basal region this is the endodermal region you could see there is a very prominent and very enhanced deposition that can be reflected by the yellow color of the suberin lamella in the overexpression line but it, this is the this is the weakest in the mutant and then in the wild type so this is consistent in the mid and the apical region so this shows that the hydrophobic barrier could be one of the pathway with which our tps8 confers the salt tolerance again we also check the casparian bands we also check the casparian bands by staining it with the berberine uh, sulfate so this gives the green color upon the microscopy so here you could see this is the endodermis region 
and here the green color that shows the Casparian bands and this is the most prominent in the overexpression line compared to the mutant which is the weakest. So these two results shows that the hydrophobic barrier deposition both superin lamella and Casparian bands are affected by the OSTPSA expression. To further confirm that, uh, what we did, we uh, did the QRT expression analysis with the rice tissue which are induced by the salt stress up to 24 hours. So here you could see these four shapes are known to regulate the synthesis of suberin precursor that is involved in the hydrophobic barrier deposition. So this is another piece of evidence that shows that hydrophobic barrier is one of the mechanism by which OSTPS8 confers the salt tolerance. Now we explore more on this OSTPS8 mediated salt stress regulation. As this OSTPS8 is involved in the sugar metabolism, so if we see the overall the metabolic metabolic pathway, that it might involve other soluble sugar as well. So we did analyze the soluble sugar in the mutant in the rice leaf tissue. We selected the rice leaf because this is the one of the photosynthetic active tissue and that is responsible to maintain the osmo osmolite in the tissue. And that is one of the strategies by which the crop plant mitigate the salt stress. So uh, for this, we did gas, gas chromatography with mass spectrometry to find out the levels of the soluble sugars. So here you could see along with the trihalose, four other soluble sugar, maltose, glucose, fructose, and the sucrose are also down-regulated in mutant compared to wild type. So this shows that soluble sugar could also one of the, uh, one of the uh, pathway by which OSTPSA acts. To know more about the uh, interacting partners or the targets of the OSTPS8, uh, we exploit the uh, tag line. We have the overexpression line of OSTPS8 with the C-terminal meek tag. So uh, we use this for the immunoprecipitation. So this is the Western blot showing 95 KDA OSTPS8 meek band using the anti meek antibody. And then by this antibody, we use the immunoprecipitation to pull down the uh, OSTPS8 interacting partners with the anti meek antibody. And, the, and then subsequently, LCMSMS result give us one of the candidate OSTPS8 9, that is the interacting partner of the OSTPS8. So this result suggests that rice TPS8 might function in complex. But this result did not give us any other candidate other than TPS. So we did some literature study uh, that uh, gave us, that suggests the involvement of the phytohormone signaling pathway downstream to TPS8. So what is known that T6P could inhibit the SNRK transcript activity. So if, uh, when we dig out more that literature, what we found that one of the SNRKs in the rice, SNRK2, that is called SAPKs, is involved in the ABS signaling module. So that shows that, that suggests uh, uh, TPSA uh, could involve the ABS signaling. So what happens in this signaling pathway is SNRK2, rice SNRK2 activate rice ABS by phosphorylation. And then this rice ABS, which are transcription factor, which regulate the transcription of ABA responsive genes which are known to regulate the salt stress tolerance in rice. So to check first whether OSTPS8 involved ABS signaling or not, what we did, we did first the phenotypic analysis. We treat the different uh, transgenic line having altered OSTPS8 expression. And upon exogenous treatment of epsisic acid of two micromolar, what we have seen is the drastic reduction in the shoot length, you could see the mutant knockout OSTPS8 and the separation line both showed um, significant reduction in the shoot length. That shows the ABA sensitivity nature due to the loss of function of the separation of the OSTPS8. That confirms that 
OSTPAC it is a regulator of ABS signaling. To know more about the players involved in this signaling mechanism, what we did, we did the gene expression analysis of the players in these modules. So we first tested the expression level of the all the SAP Ks in the rice, and we found that the three SAP Ks, SAP K8, 9, 10, that belongs to subclass 3 of the SNRK2 are significantly reduced in the mutant line because of the loss of function of the OSTPS8. So that comes in this uh, uh, module. And then uh, we also tested the expression of ABFs. So there are three known ABFs which are the downstream targets of SAPK9. So what we we observed there is no change in the transcript level of these ABFs. This is due to the fact that SNRK2 affect the protein level of the ABS, but not the transcript level. That is why we do not see any change in the transcript level. However, the ABA responsive gene that is regulated by the ABFs is significantly affected. You could see the down regulation and the up regulation of the ABA responsive gene. So we come up with a model that OSTPH8 could alter the expression of SAPK9, which activate its uh, substrate OSBZF23. And then this ABS might regulate the expression of ABA responsive gene differently. It might activate or de deactivate, and in turn, it confer or uh, regulate the salt stress tolerance. To get a genetic evidence for this, we picked up SAPK9 and what we did, we complemented the mutant line with the SAPK9. So here you could see, we got the expression level in this complementation line, greater than wild type. And then we did the salt sensitivity assay. You could see upon treatment, the complementation line behaves better than mutant, even better than wild type. And upon resuming growth also with the quantification, you could see this is the 100% rescue of the mutant. Uh, on top of that, this is also showing significant improvement uh, uh, than wild type. So this fits uh, in this model and we uh, show by the genetic evidence that the SAPK9 is epistatic to OSTPS8. So overall model, we have shown by different uh, experiments that the FK9 is downstream to OSTPS8, and these are the different putative regulators in OSTPS8 mediated salt stress regulation. And we also showed three different pathways. We showed the altered soluble sugar in the mutant that shows that this also adds to the salt stress regulation. We also showed the uh, uh, the sub altered suberin deposition by showing the hydrophobic barrier uh, differentially expressed in the overexpression line. And we also saw the altered ABS signaling in the mutant, which is known to also affect the suberin deposition. So this is our overall findings. As in, 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 in the beginning of the uh, talk, I said that it also affects the agronomic traits. I will show you a few phenotypes that the mutant and the loss of function have. Here you could see the mutant has a, a reduction in the plant height, panicle length, and the yield. This is the quantification you could see. The seed setting rate is, uh, is significantly low. As the panicle branching and the seed setting is low, so we hypothesize that might be the cell proliferation is affected. To check that, we Check the expression of the cyclin B, that is the regulator of the cell cycle. And we found that the, in the, both the loss of function and the separation line, the, these genes are significantly reduced. That can be one of the uh, major uh, uh, reason for the uh, reduced vein yield and the panicle branching. Apart from that, we also showed the reduction in the uh, seed size in the DSRNAI line. And the DSRNA, we also showed that as this is the DSRNA strategy, it, can, it could also affect the other homologs of the TPSA. That could be the uh, reason of the differential phenotype of the DSRNA. 
then this is the quantification here you could see uh, all the agronomic trait penny primary uh, branches of per panicle secondary branches spikelets and the seed setting rate all are reduced in the knockout and the loss of uh, in the separation line and well uh, complemented in the complementation line what is the good thing we observed is the independent two independent over expression line that did not show any detrimental changes in the phenotypes so no agronomic trait has been negatively affected due to the over expression of the ostps8 and in the same time it confers the soil tolerance that so that's a good thing if it can be used in in case of crop improvement so in conclusion i have showed that this gene regulate the two important uh, pathways salt stress tolerance and the grain e it confers the salinity tolerance without any negative impact on grain yield it affects the soluble sugar and the hydrophobic barrier deposition we also showed the uh, involvement of the sapk9 and the putative molecular players with this i end my talk and i will thank you nus department of biological science to carry out this research and the neri and the tll that gives space to do uh, some of the part of the research national research foundation for the funding uh, thank you for your attention good evening everyone it's time to thank dr bhushan vishal sir for delivering such an excellent session from which you know we have so many learning points in the respective field and uh, sir thank you for accepting our invitation sparing your valuable time for from your busy schedule and being you know along with us on this webinar come fdp series thank you very much sir it was a very informative interesting session and your words of wisdom will echo in our minds for a very long time to come sir and personally for me it was a thorough learning experience thank you very much sir thank you